How did I get a band 8 in writing module? Let me explain the tips. Today I am going to describe the tactics of the writing module and the points to be kept in mind while preparing the answers of the writing task. I will also share my experience as I did in the previous video that is how did I get band 8 in speaking module. Hello everyone, this is Yesha Manik with IELTSmaterial.com helping you to prepare for IELTS test, give correct answers and get a higher band score in your IELTS examination. If you find this video helpful, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe IELTS Material YouTube channel. Now let's look into the pointers to be taken care of in the writing task. Number one, no right or wrong answers. Exactly like the speaking test, even in the writing, I would suggest you not to focus on the right or wrong answers. Focus on correct English language. We have to express our opinion and the ideas that is stating the information or reporting the information and the data and even the ideas with correct English language. And this is what is to be taken care of. The first tip is there are no right or wrong answers. And as I said, this is the first thing that I came across when I started practicing for IELTS examination. Number two, analyze the question carefully. If it is a letter or a report and an essay, if the answer is not appropriate or I would say is irrelevant to the topic, you will lose marks because this is called as task achievement. So the second thing that you would do is analyzing the question properly and writing the answer appropriately according to the question will give you good bands in the marking parameter that is task achievement. Number three, notice the word limit. This is also the part of task achievement. If you're going to write task one, then you have to write at least 150 words. And if you are going to write task two, then you have to write at least 250 words. My suggestion is write around 170 to 185 words in task one and 280 to 285 words in task two. This will give you a broader perspective of explaining your ideas in a correct manner with accurate grammar and also with wide range of vocabulary. So make sure that you write your answer of the writing task according to the word limit given. Do not write less than 150 words or 250 words in either of the task. Number four, use your own words. This is very important. You have to ensure that you do not use the words from the question and present it in your answer because the examiner will not consider these words in the word count. So always try to paraphrase a question or I would suggest learn paraphrasing skills to develop the answer in your own words. So the fourth tip is use your own words and also learn paraphrasing skills. Number five, arrange the answers in paragraphs. When I started practicing for my uh, IELTS examination, the first thing that I did was, yes, to understand the uh, technique of writing and then slowly and steadily, I started preparing myself, knowing about the structure of the essays, letters and the reports. So what I came to know is, it is better to answer the questions or I would say developing the answer in different paragraphs. The most important thing even I realized when I was practicing for my IELTS examination because I was practicing for academic and general training. So I had to learn reports as well as letters along with essays. I started giving answers to many questions like is opinion important? Is it uh, important to develop different paragraphs for each and every section? How many words to be written in task one and task two? Also, how many paragraphs to be written in task one and task two? Is it important to express the opinion with answers in the introduction? When I learned all these questions, I was able to understand the structure and the way, or I would say the pattern to present the answers 
in task 1 and task 2. It was really easy for me to write the answers appropriately according to the question or I would say relevant to the question with accurate grammar using good range of vocabulary and also developing my ideas into formal structures. Number six, avoid very long sentences. I would advise that you should never use long sentences or I would say very long sentences because it makes it too complex. Two reasons that you would or I would say two difficulties you would face if you use very long sentences. The first one, the sentence or the idea will become less coherent if it is not presented properly. The second thing is you will not be able to develop the sentences with correct sentence structures and also with correct grammar. So I would suggest you limit your sentence to somewhere around 25 words and this is a perfect complex sentence. Start practicing in this way to get 8 bands and I assure you you will definitely get band 8 or band 9. Number seven, understand the task one properly. Now, what is task one? If it is academic, then it is to describe a chart, a map, a graph or a diagram. If it is a general training question, then task one is to write a formal letter, a semi-formal letter or an informal letter. You will get only one question in task one. So understand which particular question is applicable to your examination and you have to prepare according to the strategies of the questions. Now, the first thing that I said is, do not include words from the question in the introduction. Try to use your own words and develop into uh, proper sentence structures. Also notice the word limit. So this is called as understanding the task one properly. Number eight, understand the task two. What is task two? Task two is common in academic and general training and it is to write an essay. It can be an opinion essay or an advantage or disadvantage essay or a problem solution essay or a double question essay or a discussion essay. There are five types of essays. Learn the structure and the pattern of these essays. You should include four things for all the types of essays or I would say wherever the exact structure is important. So the first thing is writing an introduction with the opinion and if it is no opinion to be presented, avoid giving the opinion. Number two, supporting arguments that would actually clearly explain your ideas. Number three, real life examples to illustrate your ideas. And number four, a conclusion based on your answer. Learn the structure and you would definitely be able to expand the essay according to the name of the essay. That is whether it is important to give the opinion or it is not important to give the opinion. Try to categorize your essays into opinion based ones and the idea based ones. So the opinion based ones are the one where you give your own opinion. And the idea based ones are the one where you actually just express the ideas. Let's say a problem and its solution answer to the two questions or explaining the advantages and disadvantages. So understanding both the task is very important. Number nine, time management. For task one, the allotted time is 20 minutes. And for task two, the allotted time is 40 minutes before you start writing, you should leave five minutes or I would say you should spend five minutes to make the notes about what you're going to write or what ideas you're going to expand in your answer. Leave five minutes at the end as well to proofread or I would say to check your work. Number 10, state your position or point of view clearly. It is imperative that you state your opinion with clear reasons because if you give an incomplete answer, you will definitely get less pants. Rather than writing, I will discuss my opinion and the reasons in the upcoming paragraphs. Write the opinion, 
that is your opinion let's say for example i believe that and i agree that i disagree that with two clear reasons this shows that you're confident enough in stating the opinion taking a strong position so always express your point of view clearly number 11 do not memorize model answers the examiners are very well qualified and they would definitely come to know that the answers have been copied or the candidate has uh, memorized the answers so i would suggest do not memorize the answers because reading your answers or reading the sample answers and memorizing the sample answers both are completely different start practicing the model questions and start presenting your own answer you will be able to rectify your errors and in short you will be able to improvise in your letters or in reports or in essays number 12 use correct words i would suggest you to use topic specific vocabulary means if the topic is related to health then use words those are related to the topic health these are called as topic specific vocabulary or i would say technical words using a wide range of vocabulary will definitely give you band 8 or band 9 also use connectors and linkers or phrases to show the connection between ideas hence using correct words that is words relevant to the topic will give you good bands and number 13 finally write correct spellings we are mature learners we should definitely avoid these small mistakes that is spelling errors we should not be doing this especially in the cases of writing singular and plural words or writing the words with i e or e i or getting confused with different other confusing words we should definitely avoid or understand the meaning of the words let's say for example affect and effect where the word the affect should be used or where the word effect should be used understand the correct usage of words and then write it in a correct manner with correct spellings as i said we are mature learners and we should definitely avoid spelling errors too many tips but these 13 important tips will certainly be a helping hand in developing a structured answer if these tips guide you in enhancing your writing skills then don't forget to like share and subscribe this channel for more free ielts learning please follow ielts material youtube channel and stay updated thank you we would meet again with a new video till then bye bye